Hello friends, Pastor Doug Batchelor. We're here at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in Anaheim, California. And because I'll be busy out of town preaching this week, we're going to record our Friday evening Bible question of the week right now. So here's the question. What does it mean in the Bible where Jesus says three days and three nights? Now the verse that deals with this is found in Matthew chapter 12, verse 39, verse 40. He answered them and said, an evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, and no sign will be given but the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the huge fish for three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth. And so people say, three days, three nights. Jesus died on Friday. He was in the tomb Friday night, rose Sunday morning. That would be part of three days and only two nights no matter how you cut it. And because of this misunderstanding, a lot of people are very confused about what does it mean? Is the Bible not trustworthy? Does this mean Jesus was really crucified on Thursday or Wednesday? And there's just been a lot of discussion and confusion. The confusion, the Bible is actually perfectly accurate. The confusion comes in because people assume that Christ, when he says, part of the earth, he's talking about the tomb. That the Son of Man will be in the tomb three days and three nights. He doesn't say that. Where in the Bible does it ever call the tomb the heart of the earth? Anywhere else? It doesn't. When we do the Lord's Prayer and we say, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, does that mean in the tomb? Or in the Ten Commandments when it says, You're not to make a graven image the likeness of anything in the heaven above or in the earth beneath. Does that mean the tomb? No, the word heart of the earth or the phrase heart of the earth is talking about the word there, heart cardia. That's where you get the word cardiac. And the earth, it means the world. And it's basically saying that for three days and three nights, Jesus would be in the heart of the world or the clutches of this lost world. Now, who is the prince of this world? According to Christ, Satan is the prince of this world. He says, the prince of this world comes and he has nothing in me. And so um, even Paul refers to Satan as one of the powers in this world. And the devil offered Jesus this world when if he said, you bow down to me, and worship me, I'll give you the earth and all these kingdoms. But um, of course, Jesus came to dispute that. So when Christ um, was in the Garden of Gethsemane, the pivotal moment when the three days and the three nights began, when Jesus was in the clutches of the world, is Thursday night. You remember when in John chapter two, uh, Jesus' mother said they've run out of grape juice for the wedding. And he said, woman, mine hour is not yet come. Several times during the life and ministry of Jesus, people tried to arrest him. And he always slipped through their fingers. They tried to stone him and he escaped. And so when he said, my hour is not yet come, when did his hour come? In the garden of Gethsemane, after the Lord sealed the new covenant there in the upper room, he then crossed the Kidron. And in the garden of Gethsemane, three times he prays and he says, not my will, thy will be done. Here, something very interesting happened. You can find over and over again where Jesus said that this was the hour that he'd been waiting for. Mark 14, verse 41. Then he came the third time when he had said, not my will, thy will be done. He came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. For three days and three nights, Christ was in the hands of sinners. He was suffering for the penalty of the sins of the world. You not only find it there in Mark chapter 14, 41, Luke 22, 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down with the 12 apostles with him at the Last Supper. You also read in John 16, 32. Behold, the hour comes, yes, is now come, that he'll be scattered every man to his own and leave me alone. And so the night of his betrayal, the night of the Last Supper, he began to suffer for the sins of the world. That was Thursday night. Every other time in the ministry of life of Christ, when the devil tried to harm him, he slipped away, he escaped. The Father protected him. But after he prayed the third time, not my will, thy will be done, the Father withdrew his protection. And that's when Jesus began to suffer for our sins. The penalty for sin is not just death, it's suffering and death. They beat Jesus, they carried him from trial to trial, he was spit upon, um, he was basically tortured for three days and three nights, including the cross, he was in the heart of the earth, the clutches of the world, just like Jonah was a captive to the whale, 
and he was in the darkness of that whale three days and three nights christ was separated from the father thursday night friday night saturday night you can trust the bible friends it is true that's what jesus is talking about there and now we have a special offer i think will help you better understand this it's a book written by yours truly called the sign of jonah if you like a free copy of this just simply go and uh, ask for it with the number that you find at the bottom of the screen god bless you and we'll do another bible question next friday